What's going on all my stir crazy students? Today we're going to go through how to complete the module on camshafts in Electude. Now the camshaft is built into the top of the engine in the cylinder head typically. Um, and in the case of our Honda engines, that's where it's located. So let's get started on this. You're going to go into my individual contents, go into service e-learning. And then you're going to see the next module I've dropped in here for 413. And once you click on that, you'll get the camshaft basics module that pops up and we'll get started. So it, just like our Honda engines, uh, we've got the camshaft up here. Uh, in this case, we got a dual overhead cam, overhead cam because it's on the top side of the engine versus a camshaft style that would be down in the block. Um, this is a dual overhead cam where our Honda engines are a single overhead cam. So they just have an extra one in this case, one for intake valve, one for exhaust valve. Now let me read this introduction. It says the camshaft is the camshaft is a shaft with lobes that open the intake and exhaust valves. Cam lobes are oval shaped. Most camshafts are made of either forged steel or cast iron. When the camshaft turns, the lifter follows the shape of the camshaft lobe which transfers the motion to the valves. A valve spring keeps the valve closed when it's not being opened by the cam lobe. The camshaft is driven by the crankshaft by a timing belt, chain, or gears, and turns at half the speed of the crankshaft. So if we break that down a little more, you notice this gear right here, the camshaft gear, is twice as big as the gear that's down here at the bottom. That's because we need it to rotate at half the speed. One half of it's going to be for letting the air and fuel in. The other half the rotation is going to be for letting the exhaust out. So that's why they make it twice as big. You're going to see all of these egg-shaped pieces here as they rotate around. They're going to push down on the little lifter there. And they are going to open the valve, whichever one would be intake or exhaust. So the camshaft's job in life is to open and close the valves and either let air and fuel in or let exhaust out. So let's select a few of these and identify them. So we have the camshaft up here. And then on the front of that, we're going to have the camshaft gear. Now this one is being driven by a timing belt, just like our Honda engines. It's also very common for this to be made out of a timing chain. So it's made out of a, a flexible metal, just like a bike chain. There's also some other applications where the two gears are actually meshed together. It's more of a racing application. You don't see it too often in, in uh, street cars. Now we've got our valve over here, and then we got our valve spring. Now remember, valves are always closed 100% of the time unless the camshaft lobe pushes on it. So it's the job of that spring to keep it closed unless the camshaft lobe pushes down. Let's go to the second one. What is the function of the camshaft? That's going to be what opens my valve to let air and fuel in or let exhaust out. So it is going to operate the valves. Code number three. What can you compare the shape of a cam lobe to? And if we look at this one right here, this shape represents an egg. So it's an oval shape, and that's what allows it to spin, yet push on my valves to open and close them. And number four. From which materials can a camshaft be made? Um, up here it says they can be either be made of forged steel or cast iron. So we've got forged steel and cast iron. They are not made of plastic, at least not yet. Um, and they're not typically made out of aluminum, although some are built aluminum for race applications. And now we'll go to the second one. So we've got a couple different engine designs here. And I'll read this part first. It says the location and number of camshafts within an engine can differ according to engine design. Single and double overhead camshafts are typically found in passenger cars and light trucks. The in-block camshaft with overhead valves and pushrod design is often found in heavy-duty commercial applications. This one right here is becoming the most common dual overhead cam where one of them controls the intake of air and fuel the other one controls the exhaust. This is what we took apart in class. This is our Honda engine where we just have one camshaft that does both. 
And then you've got the other style down here. This one's starting to phase out, not as common because you've got a lot more parts involved in it. And it's not as favorable for doing things like VTEC and variable valve timing. So let's identify a couple of these. It says click on the different camshaft configurations. Single overhead camshaft. Well, which one of these has one camshaft that's overhead on top? That's going to be this guy right here. In block camshaft with overhead valves. Which one of these has the camshaft in the block? That's going to be this one right here. And then finally, double overhead cam or dual overhead cam, DOHC as it's commonly called. It's going to be this guy. Now what we're going to do is break this down a little further and talk about the individual parts. And this is what we did when we took apart those Kohler small engines in the Auto Fundamentals class. It says click the components of the system with a camshaft with overhead valves. So first one, the camshaft. That's right here. This is going to be down in the block. We've then got a push rod, and that's going to be this long piece right here. There's going to be a rocker arm, which we call the teeter totter. That changes the direction of motion. And then we got the lifter, and this is what rides along the camshaft lobe and gives it a wider surface to push up on. And now we'll go to number three. It says, study the animation carefully, watching for the operation, I'm sorry, watching for the opening and closing of valves in relation to the position of the piston. Find the components of the system with a double overhead camshaft. So the first thing it wants us to do is find the intake valves camshaft. And what we're looking for is the one that opens first. So you're going to see this guy open now, and then that one open. What that tells me is this is my intake side. And because this one opens second, this is going to be my exhaust side. And we'll go to number three at the top. So we're going to get a little more detailed now and kind of talk about how these valves interact together uh, to create more power in an engine. So it says the valves don't usually open and close precisely at top dead center or TDC and bottom dead center or BDC. What they're saying is when the piston's all the way at the top here, that's top dead center. And when the piston goes all the way to the bottom, that's bottom dead center. A lot of times we think the piston goes 100% to the top, and then it opens. But that's not actually the case. There's a little bit, it opens a little early, and it closes a little late. Um, the engine's going so fast, it needs a little extra time to make all this happen. In fact, the intake valve opens slightly before TDC, or top dead center when the exhaust valve is still open. And we're gonna call that valve overlap because they're actually open at the same time. This is referred to as valve overlap or scavenging and creates a small vacuum in the cylinder. The fresh intake mixture helps remove any remaining exhaust gases. Valve overlap takes place only at the end of the exhaust stroke and beginning of the intake stroke. So what you're essentially getting is a little extra push to force the rest of that exhaust gas out so you get some nice clean air and fuel on the inside. The time the valve is open can be illustrated in a valve diagram. First thing we're going to do is find the intake valve's camshaft. And that's going to be one over here by the, the green side there in the fuel. And then on the other side of the engine, we've got the exhaust side. Click up there. Go to number two. Click the button to have the engine turn and draw the valve diagram. So we're going to hit play right here, and you're going to see it kind of diagram out a nice swirl pattern. So that's intake, compression, power, and then exhaust. And then that process is going to repeat over and over. So we've got intake, then the piston goes up for compression, and then we've got power, and then the exhaust valve opens for the exhaust. We'll go to number three. You can now go through the four stroke process by using the slider bar. Click the following instances in the valve diagram. So the first question it's asking us is when does the intake valve open? And if I move the slider bar down here, I want you to watch this valve right here. Right away it opens. That's what allowed my air and fuel in. 
So we're going to click the blue dot right here because that's exactly when the intake valve opened to let my air and fuel in. The next question is when does the intake valve close? So I'm going to move my slider bar and we see it's open, open, open. And now it's starting to close up. And right there is where it closed and, stopped and blocked off my air and fuel. So that's where my intake valve closed. I'm going to slide this along a little further here. We'll go through our power phase. And the next question is when does the exhaust valve open? Well, you've probably already figured it out. It's right here. We're going to look at why that's the answer. So right here, my exhaust valve opens, and now my piston is able to push the exhaust gases out, and then they go through the exhaust system and through the muffler and out the back of the car. So exhaust valve opens right here. And then all you smart kids probably already know this, but right here is where it's going to close. And then I'm going to ask you a question. What happens after this? Think about it. Think about it. You got it. The intake valve is going to open again, and we're going to repeat the whole process over and over and over again. We'll go to number four now. So things are going to get a little more tricky now. We're going to start looking at how the intake valve and the exhaust valve open and close in relation to one another. So it says the opening of the valves can also be plotted in comparison to the angle of the crankshaft, which is this part down here. Turn the crankshaft using the slider bar. So as I move this, now you're going to see that pink vertical bar kind of slide across. So exhaust valves open. And what you're going to notice right here is that exhaust valve is open, but what's also open? The intake valve is starting to open, and that's that fresh air is going to give it a little boost, pushing the exhaust valve out. I'm sorry, pushing the exhaust out of the cylinder. So that's where our valve overlap is going to be right there. So slide that bar all the way across. Now we'll go to number five. <clears throat> and this time we're going to click on the following images. The line for the intake valve. I'm going to ask you guys, what color is the intake valve one? Is that the red or the green? It's going to be the green one. And then what color is the line for the exhaust valves? Well, it's going to be the red one up top here. So now what we got to do is identify these points right here, and it has a start with the intake valve, and it wants to know when does the intake valve open. If I move my bar across right here, right there is where my intake valve actually opens. What's interesting is what's actually going on. What's happening is my exhaust valve is actually open. My exhaust is still getting pushed out, but now we're going to start to open our intake valve to kind of help push the air out. So right here is where my intake valve opens. The next question is intake valve is open to its maximum height. Now because this is an egg shape, it opens and then it opens more, 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 more. I guess it one. It starts to open here, more, more, more. It's not until the camshaft lobe hits right here that it's fully open that distance. So that's going to be right there. And my camshaft lobe is pushing the greatest distance that it opens my intake valve all the way. I'm going to select this blue dot here. And then when is my intake valve closed? As I move this along, we're going to see right there is where the camshaft stops pushing on my lifter. And it's now closed. We're going to repeat that process for my exhaust valve. So right here you're going to see the valve starts to push on the lifter. It starts to open the exhaust valve. So we're going to click right there. And then keep sliding this until it's open the maximum distance, which is going to be right about there. You're going to see that lobe was pushed directly down, pointed directly down towards my valve. So we're going to click right here. And then if I keep going, right here is when my exhaust valve is no longer open. So that's a lot of stuff happening inside the engine for one revolution. All right, next question it says, you can change the intake cam shape by using the buttons. And they're talking about these right here. What is the influence of a more sharply pointed, of a more sharply pointed intake cam lobe? 
And what we're going to see is, if you watch the diagram right here, when I go to a, a sharper pointed one, it actually opens later and closes sooner. So it actually allows less air and fuel into the engine. So this one's going to give me more power by keeping it open longer. So it's asking us about the pointed one. And the intake valve will close earlier. That's going to be true because right here it closed earlier. The intake valve will open later. That's also true because we saw it scoot over. I'll do it again. So with the bigger one, it opens here. With the pointed one, it actually opens later. So that's also true. And then it's asking us about exhaust valves. If I click this back and forth, you're going to see it has zero effect on the exhaust valve because it's not on the exhaust valve. So those are going to be false. Now we'll go to number eight. What is the influence of turning the crankshaft camshaft? You can adjust the intake camshaft by moving the slide bar to the right. So now we're getting into variable valve timing. And what we're able to do is change when we open and close our valves. And that can either give us lower end performance or higher end performance. So what it wants us to do is slide the bar to the right. So we've got it slid to the right. And what you're going to notice is it opens earlier and it closes earlier. And the intake valve will close earlier. That is true. The exhaust valve will close earlier. Well, as we already saw, it has no effect on the exhaust valve. It's only the intake valve it's affecting. So that's going to be false. Another question about the exhaust valve, so that's going to be false. And now the intake valve will open earlier. Yes, it does. When we slide to the right, it's opening sooner. So that's also true. And number nine. Which name has been given to the system that can influence valve opening? They're going to cut camshaft adjustment. So by <clears throat> moving it a little bit, we can adjust when things open and close. All right, that completes the module on camshafts. I realize they are a little complicated, but what we have to remember is their basic job in life is to open and close my valves. And we can play with when that happens um, by adjusting things. Um, we can also adjust what the profile looks like. But at the end of the day, their job is to open and close valves. All right, if you have any questions, make sure you let us know. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and stay safe.